our objective number one on this one is uh, this presentation, um, building envelope commissioning, basically understand how building envelope impacts the building performance and potential impacts of poor design and construction. Discuss technical standards for performing building envelope commissioning. Um, objective three, review best practices and consideration for building envelope commissioning services. And objective four, overview of building that can be gained and discussed. Anybody uh, has prior knowledge of commissioning? Okay. So what is triggering building envelope commissioning? There are two factors here. Energy code evolution since 1970s and durability of building materials and assemblies. Those are the two key factors here. Uh, back in 1970, the oil embargo happened 1973. So there were like two entities that has been created that time, uh, US Department of Energy and ASHRAE. So ASHRAE basically focused on development of energy principles, and DOE was imp implementing those, those principles. So from 1970 to 80s, ASHRAE 90.1 was created, and it was 14% savings. Then another milestone came in 2007 to 2010, where there was a push for 30% energy savings. And then from ASHRAE 2010, now in 2030, it's basically focuses on net zero. So amount of energy you, you consume in the building is offset by, by on-site renewal. So that's, that is one of the biggest uh, um, energy code evolution. And uh, approximately 40% of energy is consumed in the United States between commercial buildings and residential buildings. And we're going to discuss more about out of that 40%, 6% is the culprit. What is it? Air leakage. And by air leakage means air leaking through exterior envelope. So this is part of the exterior wall to roofs interface. So that's, that's the key discussion of building envelope commissioning here, what we're going to discuss. Um, Approximately 50% of heating loads in residential building and 60% commercial buildings results in energy flow through building envelope walls, foundation, and roofs. These are the stats, what I'm just discussing. So most of the new buildings, we have some control as standards have improved, but we still have approximately 5.5 million buildings in the United States since 1992. So we discussed a bit of uh, energy revolution. Uh, I may, uh, the other factor is uh, in development of building envelope commissioning is durability of materials, okay? Common building envelope problems, uh, what we see here. Uh, lack of understanding of air, water, thermal barrier, within building enclosure. So it's, it's basically, when we discuss about building enclosure, there are four factors what we come across. Its acronym is HAM, heat, air, moisture, bulk moisture, and moisture in the, in the, in the vapor form. So these are the base, basic culprits, if not taken in, into account during designing and during implementation. Uh, then relying on single rainwater barrier for building enclosure, we'll see examples in upcoming slides. And then using of untested building material happens, although we have NOAs and tested assemblies, still we keep seeing. Lack of understanding of moisture intrusion mechanism and lack of proper flashing and lack of understanding between HVAC system and, and the assemblies, building envelope assemblies. Then, here, lack of modeling means use of woofy hydrothermal modeling when you design enclosure assemblies because it's nowadays we see some specialty uh, uh, walls, roofs assemblies, waterproofing. So all these needs to be tested at least using hydrothermal modeling prior to implementing. And lack of dis defined expectation of building performance. Somebody needs like 50-year-old or 
100 years old building, but we're still using like 10 to 15 years worth of uh, life expectancy of material. So that needs to be properly understood. Uh, the top left uh, corner, basically, you know, that's lack of continuity of your air barrier, simple terms, such as Tywek, okay, it's missing. Then top middle photograph, there's no continuity of wall and roof, uh, roof waterproofing, you can say, that resulting in issues. This photograph re relying on one material, it's a uh, solid brick, but uh, there's no barrier or there's no control joints proper. Uh, the middle bottom photograph, basically your air leaking from the parapet walls causing issues and here condensation happening within the assembly resulting in corrosion of the studs. Th these are some, some examples quickly showing issues concerned with the existing construction. So um, these stats, 40% all issues due to ore infiltration and approximately 70% of the construction litigation is still there due to ore intrusion. Uh, this is ongoing, we keep seeing this. So we discuss energy code evolution and building uh, and uh, durability of material being an issue, and now what is the building envelope commissioning is an emphasis. So there is an emphasis to whenever we designed any envelope, in this discussion envelope means wall, roofs, and foundation. So we need to take care of these four items basically. We need to have a thermal control, which is insulation, your air control, vapor control, and water control. So basically the exterior, any cladding like brick, siding that takes care of water. Your air and vapor is, it could be combined together, and thermal is the insulation. Those are the four factors, as we discussed earlier, HAM acronym, heat, air, moisture in bulk water, and in gaseous form. And this slide over here, um, air barrier session, um, they have come up with good details, and the emphasis is, you know, we typically see on the reds indicates the air barrier. I'm gonna give another generic term like, let's say, Tywek or some kind of liquid barrier or other materials. So there has to be continuity maintained between the exterior and interior. So a lot of time we have seen there is no continuity maintained and it causes an issue. Same thing with thermal. So it has to have a con continuous, uh, there should be no break in the breach in the envelope. And then this is the blue indicates bulk water control line. So if we take care of this, our building should be good. Another uh, emphasis from energy codes. Air barriers are well-known technology for achieving air tightness of the building. And uncontrolled air movement through the building envelope, either it's infiltration or exfiltration, both ways can account up to 50% of heating loads and significant part of cooling loads. So this is, and it's, it causes like 30% of uh, building envelope HVAC cost. So this definition is all mentioned in energy code, and this is what we're discussing. We're gonna put emphasis on air barriers mainly. It goes prior to you install your finished cladding system. So a lot of emphasis on quality control in the field, with testing and also quality assurance observers happening nowadays. Uh, up to mid 70s, this was the team basically, architect, electrical contractor, mechanical contractor, general contractor, and engineers. And after mid 70s, where specialty uh, contractors came into play. That's fire alarm, fire protection, and other specialty contractors. And with the, within this team, there started an issue between, you know, there's not proper coordination happening, there are poor envelope details and change orders happening. So what is exactly commissioning? It's an ongoing process, ideally spanning from pre-design, going through design construction, then occupancy, after even occupancy, 
there is, we'll discuss how it, what we need to do. It's not an event specific task or testing event. Okay? So it started, originated from the shipping industry where the commissioning used to happen. And from that principles, it went into building industry. So when you talk about total commissioning, it consists of electrical, plumbing, security, mechanical, life safety, and now it includes building envelope too. You can do individual commissioning depending on the project. One of these can be picked. So what is the process here, commissioning process? It's basically an owner and then CXA stands for commissioning agent, commissioning authority, and within, under him is, under commissioning agent is building and lock commissioning agent. There could be mechanical commissioning, electrical plumbing, fire protection, acoustical. Um, you have independent architect and his team and general contractor. So commissioning agent is engaged to the owner. And uh, these are separate entities. And uh, building and lock commissioning agent and CXA agents are engaged to uh, only CXA. So not to confuse, uh, building and lock commissioning is different from mechanical commissioning. So when you talk about building commissioning, basically everybody gets into its mechanical commissioning. Yes, they were the first to start, but then this is branched out a different trade now. Uh, Within NIB's guideline, one of the agencies, the process by which the design and constructed performance of building enclosure, material, component, assembly, and systems are validated to meet objective and requirements of project as established by the owner. So uh, this is one of the agencies who developed National Institute of Building Sciences. They, they had a very good document defining what is commissioning process, and we'll see some other definitions too. Ashra also developed a very similar process. It's first the owner develops, what are the, my guidelines? Is it a 100-year building, 50-year building, what kind of planning, and other, other things, we'll, we'll see some examples. Uh, currently, this document by ASTM E2947, which is, which is a, uh, uh, most of us follow, so they have a definition also. I'm not going to read through it, but it's almost uh, very similar what NIBS, NIBS defined for it. Um, this is one of the examples. Uh, I just uh, you know, pulled it out of one of the RFQs uh, by an owner. It's an example of uh, retrofitting existing six-story six facade. It was a brick facade, and the owner wants to develop a high-performance envelope building. Okay, and uh, uh, and then basically it talks about systematic approach, improve infiltration, exfiltration, increase R value, reducing thermal bridging, and, and other things. And this is important. The exterior shall be developed to endure for at least 75 years. So you start thinking, okay, what do I need for my building now? Is it going to be, for example, is it metal, or it could be stone, or could some other durable material, which is going to be plus 75 years. So this is an example of just OPR, which we call it Owner's Performance Requirements. Again, history of commissioning. Uh, these are the major on your right side, what you see, ASHRAE, NIBS, ASTMs, and California Tile Floor. Uh, they are the main key players. Um, it started back in 1982 by ASHRAE, just the commissioning guidelines. Then just focus on the yellow ones, 2005. ASHRAE guideline zero, the commissioning process started. 2006 is where NIB started, National Institute of Building Sciences for enclosure, started their process. Then 2012, an agreement on building enclosure commissioning. Guideline three, NIB's guideline document for building commissioning. So 2021, this is 2947, is the building enclosure commissioning guide. What Came out. Basically, you know, it started with ASHRAE, then other agency jumped in. Now everything combined with ASTM to release the document. ASHRAE, again, the commissioning process, they combined uh, guidelines, exterior enclosure NIBs. So that was 
combined into ASHRAE, and this was released in 2018, Commissioning Process of Buildings and Systems. So uh, just to recap, I know it's too much information, but the commissioning process started by ASHRAE guideline, then ASHRAE guideline 1.1, how to apply to HVAC systems, then NIBS, Building Sciences for Exterior Envelope, they took over. And then finally, it's all, everything is combined in ASTM documents. So um, again, for the new buildings, we call it building and commissioning or just commissioning. And for existing facilities, if we're trying to achieve commissioning, we call it retro commissioning. Um, achieving building and process. So pre-design, it always starts at the pre-design. You need to engage building and lab consultants at pre-design stage or commissioning, commissioning agent. Um, basically, we saw an example how an OPR is put together, and this is being used by architects, engineer to, to go through the process. Owner defines basis of design, then during the design review process. So commissioning agent, under him is the building and lab commissioning agent. If I'm in, uh, involved, I have to do a document review and look for HAM acronym, what we discussed about, control of heat, air, vapor flow, uh, then control of bulk water, which is, which is a major one, and also solar lighting and radiation from gaining uh, from heat load point of uh, view. Then the construction phase, and basically it's very similar, submittal review, and then there are different roles within commissioning, whether you can perform a test for the owner, and, but according to ASTM documents, I think few of them tell you're better off basically witnessing a uh, test. So you become an independent agent, and you, other person does the testing portion. So there, there are theories about it. And then post-occupancy. So commissioning doesn't stop at construction phase. So after 10 months, you again, go to the site to do warranty inspections and interview occupants to understand how uh, they are feeling about any issues. And then you still have to resolve any outstanding commissioning issues at that point and issue a report. So this is, this is the process, basically. Uh, this slide is basically the same as what we discussed. And um, there's a definition on the left side, OPR requirements. Um, it's basically. Um, also um, mentioned in ASHRAE standard 202, a written document that details the functional requirement of the project, very important, and that's by the owner, and expectations of how it will be used and operated. So this include project goals, measurable performance criteria, if they want to save energy 30% or beyond 60%, uh, cost considerations, benchmark success, and supporting information. So, and uh, this slide basically tells, you know, uh, building and lock commissioning and owner, they're, uh, they're not, uh, they're not, uh, well, it's, uh, their relationship is defined, and architect, they can take a suggestion from commissioning, or they want to um, use their own methods, they can do it, so. Um, so building and lab commissioning avoids, helps avoid issues in construction. It's already discussed, the major ones, air infiltration, water infiltration, improve air indoor quality, raise small growth, improving balance of HVAC. So those are the main um, process involved. And within ASTME 2813 document, it defines there are two kinds of commissioning. One is fundamental and one is uh, enhanced. So within fundamental, during the design process, you do only one design review. And during uh, enhanced, you do three design reviews. So that is a big one. Uh, then, like field test, mandatory fundamental commissioning test defined by ASTME 2813. Uh, it's nothing new that, uh, we haven't encountered, even if we don't call it commissioning, we, we do a lot of air and water test of walls, air and water infiltration testing of windows, IR scan on the roofs, um, AMA 
uh, spray water on the exterior and see what is the infiltration happening and sealant test. So these are typically what we do, even if we don't call it commissioning, it has been done. And this is a mandatory test, um, either whole building air test. So either, so you test the building under pressurization or depressurization and see where the leakages are. So those, those need to be mandatory. And again, AMA 501.2, and this one is the last one, E966, is basically a certain project close to airport or per client's request, how good is performing against the incoming sound or outgoing sound. So sound attenuation is the major ones. Um, these are the tests common to both, okay? Uh, and, and we typically do this, even if your project doesn't call it commissioning. These are some examples of, you know, during the document phase, you have to thoroughly review what architect and engineers do and provide your comments to owner. Uh, another example, just showing a, this is a roof plan, but showing how detailed you have to get into it, understand OPR requirements, and that could also include if your job is insured by factory mutual. So you look all these uh, different criteria, code re criteria and then give your input to architect engineers. They may take your suggestions, they may not. Um, another example showing detail, again in this case, will be pointed out. Uh, uh, th there were issues with this. Um, it's, uh, we don't have time to get into detail. Um, again, you know, we mark uh, the issues related with the with the waterproofing details, uh, when, when it connects to the exterior, how metal is interfaced with, with your waterproofing membrane or control joints not shown in this uh, brick masonry. So that's a big problem. Let me add something to this. This is where we see the biggest problem is that the people, when you get, you get into the commissioning process, they really don't understand it. And what the very importance is that the building envelope commissioning agent has to be engaged during the pre-design of the building, during the conception, because this right here, what you see, if we come in there, we only do one review at the end, the architect is going to have to go back and redo an awful lot of what he's already done. And that's where the arguments come in. You know, they, well, we weren't experts, you should have been here earlier. And all these different things, but it's not us, right? We got engaged too late. But we always say, engage the building ammo commissioning at the beginning of the project. So then that way we can work hand in hand with the architects and do the reviews as they're developing the design. So that way when it gets to 100%, everything's just punched out already. But if we start doing this at the end, is what you really well they're not gonna do it and they're gonna want to fail in the test they come after. And we see a lot of time uh, we get to review drawings when they are out for permitting. Yeah. That's too late. Okay, so uh, but but owner has to engage uh, commissioning upfront. Uh, we talked about you know testing existing assemblies. I mentioned early in the process this is a new tool, you can do hydrothermal analysis. This is a software called Woofy. And in this example, we're showing, uh, you know, one of the designers put vapor retarder right between the insulation and how it performed. So uh, we, we ran calculation and basically it's showing for that particular climate, your moisture is keep going on, okay? as, as Years progress, the, the moisture is just increasing in the assembly. And uh, on top, it gives you a mold index. And uh, so basically, you know, it's showing a red. That means your roof assembly is going to have mold growth, either within the assembly or certain part of the assembly. So these are the upfront things during the design process. You can take advantage. Okay. And then um, Basically, the vapor retarder used to be, uh, in this situation, um, was uh, we modeled with vapor retarder right above the deck, and it worked fine for that particular climate zone. Um, 
here are some examples what we uh, typically do. Just don't take uh, your details from uh, typical standards. Okay, you have to develop your own details for each job scenario. Very important. The, 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 the big takeaway here is many manufacturers, they have their generic type details. You know, as a designer, whatever manufacturer you're using, you have to take that and you have to interpret it into what the building, you know, geometry really is. What's going on with that building? What does it look like? So you layer it. So all your details should look like this, right? Where they actually have been actually represents what the building's going to look like. And remember what that installer is going to be looking at if they have the drawings up there, which a lot of don't. But that's the way it's supposed to look at the end. Then that way there's no argument. There's a, um, you, you know, here you're dealing with a building that you want it to perform in a certain manner. You don't want to leave that to interpretation of someone who has no idea that when they're putting together has to meet a certain performance requirement. You remember those guys are out there, like in the roof situation, they are there at 120 degrees, 130 degrees, they're tired. They don't have time to be thinking for you, right? So specifics in detailing is really is a must. So, I mean, this is typically a typical new roof assembly. So it's not like a lot of time we see just two lines shown in the a section. This is your roof system reference specification. Now within specification, you're gonna, you're gonna review like, okay, there are like four different kind of insulations. And during the pandemic time, there was shortage of polyiso. People started substituting the insulation with expanded polystyrene. Now we start seeing issues, fire issues. It doesn't take, I mean, it's low, I mean, it can't resist very high temperature. So we started seeing issues. And a lot of time, if your building is insured by factory mutual, it doesn't work for them. So just, you know, there's a lot goes on to engage your commissioning agent up front. And some detail over here, you know, how your roof ties down to wall flashing. So you have to develop those details. And same thing if your roof is sloping against your masonry wall. A lot of new schools we see, uh, there's hardly any step flashing there. So Everything has to be detailed properly. Uh, it's another example. Okay. Guido, you can uh, you explain. Switch. Switch. This is another example of, you know, this is this is an actual project that we went through and we were calling out things for, you know, for a designer. But this is at the end. You know, if you, could, if you think that that guy's going to go back and change all this, well, if he doesn't, He's in trouble because he's not going to he's not going to pass the construction phase of it, which is the testing, and building angle commissioning. You you have the peer review, which is this, and then you have building angle commissioning testing portion of it, and that's when you're going to see if this works or not, whether it be roofs, whether it be walls, you know, fenestrations, splashes, and so on. So you have to get this right in order for them, because remember, like I was mentioning. Don't, don't leave it to the guys to interpret out of the field and do your work for you, right? This way they, they, they totally understand what's supposed to, how it's supposed to be put, be put together. Now, are those additional notes or are those things they missed? Yeah, these are all comments. All of these right here, comments on something that they have to go back and go but the, readdress. But the note is there for them, they just didn't interpret it correctly. No, this is part of the document review. Yeah, this is document. That's how you do yeah. yellow. Yeah, the yes. yellow. So that's after that. Yeah, this is this is once the this is the particular situation. This was after they were done, and, and they sent it to us too late. Okay. But we still do it, and this is how it comes out when you do it too late. Okay. You know, so then right. you know, everybody's scratching their heads and what do we do? You got to go back and go fix it, and of course. For the architect, the designer of record, the situation, right? Is this be new construction? Uh, there's a huge loss for them, right? It's just knowing when to engage yeah. people and understanding what building, uh, what building commission is all about, when to engage different parties at the right time. And this is again during the in the NIBS guidelines and even ASTM. So you have to during the construction process. 
Um, we need to work with the architectural team, specify what are the uh, mockups needs to be done. So upfront, discuss with the team, these are the, some mockups, and that's always very beneficial. All the ISO, or available, or whatever type of continuous installation, are the normal FDAs. So this is again showing wall uh, air barrier, you know, how uh, that, that is pause detector. It can be taken out in the field, and uh, it can this, this here was actually at one of the uh, uh, trade shows, and the faster people really coming out with some very uh, excellent uh, ideas of how to prevent thermal bridging. Like some of the green there is plastics that they use to isolate the actual faster, and you can still be able to hold it and prevent that thermal bridging that causes condensation, right? You, you know, within the assembly. And this particular, this actually is a test, and then you're able to check to see if any air leakage through those fasteners. Uh, that's the, this is one of the tests that we also do here at the This particular project here uh, was one that we did, uh, Addison Courthouse um, Federal Project. In this particular one, we, we were engaged as the Building Animal Commissioning Testing Agency. Mm -hmm. So be aware that, don't just say building envelope commissioning. It all depends on the owner because we work for the owner. Okay, so the, the owner can say, okay, you guys can be the building envelope commissioning agent, right, that, do so, that, that uh, provides the, the commissioning plan and writes the commissioning plan. And you can also do the building envelope commissioning testing. It's up to the owner. Some owners in this particular situation, they have a different building ammo commissioning agent, and they hired us to go be the building ammo commissioning testing agency. So some, uh, quite a few of the professionals have gotten into, they're getting into this, they only do, do the first part. Because it's an awful lot of equipment you have to have, you know, that you guys are really popular. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, they, they love us. In, 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 this, in that particular project, it's still that one, they couldn't get the windows right because they, they're they all custom made, blast proof and all those different things, and they never passed any of the window tests. And so needless to say, at the end, they canceled the, 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 the uh, yeah, the, you know, the pressurization of the building because they knew it wasn't pass, right? And I don't know what took place, what kind of negotiations, because that was, a GSA project, that was a government project. So. so, I mean, the key also is during your specifications stage, work with the team and do this testing at, you know, 10% completion, 50%, and then, so if you if you are caught up at 10%, it saves everything. Yeah, that, that all comes to the commissioning plan when it's, when it's put together by the commissioning agent. You know, it's a one disk test done at 10%, so you know what you have. 80% making sure as to the sum, I mean, as the construction progresses, you're, you're making sure that you're, you know, uh, uh, fixing problems that, that, are, that are not being, well, things are not being done correctly, right? And uh, this is some of the testing that can be uh, um, uh, required, right? Such as the bell chamber testing. Then you have the electronic capacitance testing. This that's instead of the uh, of the uh, infrared testing, uh, you got bonding pull test, nuclear testing for, for moisture infiltration, and then of course you have your your infrared testing. Here you can actually see when you put the fasteners up on top. That's what happens. So you actually are thermal bridging all the way through. He, he actually uh, was involved in, in uh, either, either you're gaining heat from, yeah. from outside into the building yeah. or losing heat from inside out. So, so yeah, 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 research that Rupesh did with that, the University of Florida uh, came out to, depending, especially down here in the south, so we use a lot of fasteners for, for the uplift. It was up to 40% energy loss. In the corners, in the building, which building was that? This, this year was actually a, uh, a research that was done with 
What department was over there? Uh, okay, you have? Breaker. Oh, no, yeah. Breaker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was something that uh, they did. Again, we, we, we still see RFPs and RFQs. People want to do flood tests on the roofs. Okay, we have non-destructive ways to do. It's, it's not, we don't recommend doing flood tests. And uh, this is, again, testing the fastener, again, for the air barriers. And that one is the blower door testing. Guido, you, know, you want to discuss a little bit more? Yeah, yeah. The, you know, this is the one that told you that for that uh, federal courthouse, they went ahead and canceled this one. What's the sense of doing it if you've been failing the whole time, right? Because this this uh, 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 building pressurization, we go in there, we depressurize the building, and then we're able to tell how much uh, resistance it has, right, in the meters, so we know it's leaking. Now we have to identify where it's leaking from. So as we do infrared, then we make sure just something that we're running into now is it has to be 10 degrees difference between outside air and the inside. Be able to. Are you connected with leads? Leads credits? Yes, I'm going to. Oh, it's all right now. So, uh, ICC 2015 building analog air leakage, it's, it's a mandatory. Um, it's uh, the previous version wasn't mandatory, but now it is. Uh, again, a slide here. Basically, this is the code mandated, the second one. Point 40 CFM earlier, prior to a decade earlier, it was 1.8 CFM. Okay, so just letting you know, this is the second line is the code. So basically, four times it should be airtight than the previous one. And then these are again US uh, Corps of Engineers, 0.25. Then, you know, again, uh, uh, this one agency requires 0.10, and then passive house, very tight, 0.08. So these are some standards. So the code one is point zero. <coughs> it's, it's achievable, even if you have some gaps and all. That's that's very minimal. Um, we just showed here is a air barrier station and overage. They have a calculator. Um, here it's basically telling base case with no air barrier and is a air barrier all around. And uh, basically, your cold room moisture transfer in the base case is 100,000 gallons, which is reduced water. And that, that's basically a graph. I have to run this because a few more slides. And this is for the mixed mixed climate, very similar scenario. And you have algorithm which gives you energy savings also. Uh, let me discuss this. Okay. Uh, Air leakage thermal envelope is mandatory according to IC 20, uh, 2015. And your building shall be tested in accordance with ASTM E779. That's the global testing. It's one of the mandatory tests for the new construction. Uh, and then Florida has adopted ICC 2021. They have now included a review of drawings, inspection, and testing is required. So, uh, and then lower door testing is again required anyway. So, this is a new thing which is coming to your ICC and look. Some jurisdiction they look into ASHRAE, but both are like very, very similar guidelines. Then, regarding lead, uh, I know three, version three and four, they covered much of this uh, building analog, but now 4.1. It's in accordance with uh, ASTM 2947 and actually 0 10-month warranty inspection and post-occupancy. So all these agencies are kind of, you know, they're, they're looking into each other and taking, you know, all good principles. Uh, now, is this only enforced at the order of Well, no, it's, it's, it's mandated once it, once it goes into the building. Right, no, the uh, lead is not a building code, but you can design if your OPR is designed my building to lead 3.0, you don't have to. Again, yeah, this just this slide is on. This is just impressing your lead, but the building code, energy code, does have yeah. mandates okay. that requires it. The building code is not Well, hopefully, policing yourself, because we all know that the building department is not policing anything. Yeah, see, point. 0 0.40 leakage is very minimal. If your OPR says I'm gonna, I want my energy reduction by 40 percent, 
then you better take care of all these things. Yeah, what happens is going back to policing, that's why you get into play. The, the architects, right, they, they get to decide according to what the building code requirements are. And that's why we come in as perhaps a tool that calls the policing agency, right, that comes in. Like us, we go through, we make sure that all these things are happening. Okay. Yeah. Until they tell you, we leak too much. Yeah, exactly. We don't need it. We want it to leak and we want it to be molding inside. Okay. So uh, we talked about uh, IECC, they're requiring review of drawings, and, and it's actually you need to submit your air barrier plan and also you know, showing continuity between air barrier, thermal barrier, what we discussed earlier. So this is one of the diagrams showing air barrier continuity in roof plans and also in sections. Uh, quickly, uh, what is the commissioning cost? Because this data is from 2015, I think. Total building commissioning cost, uh, it ranges from 13 cents to 48 cents per square foot for existing building and 40 cents to $1.35 for new construction uh, based on the And that's total. That's building. the total building. That's total, including okay. you know, mechanical commission like we talked earlier about holy owners. So this is a slide where you know, it, it compares 20, 2009 and 2018. Um, top ones, you know, owner wants to do this commissioning to ensure system performance. It was up 44%, then extend equipment life and comply with organization's mandated policy. So uh, there are other things too, but a lot of owners, they are requiring uh, mandatory commissioning. And uh, this is again a slide, uh, very similar to what we discussed earlier from different agency. And this is from the NIBS slide, which is only dealing with building envelope commissioning. Again, one rule is 1% of your building enclosure cost. You can take that principle um, for commissioning, building envelope commissioning, or they give some guidelines. Uh, again, this is based on 2012 uh, project with 20 million. So BECX cost is around 40,000. Then, uh, you know, so that's another number between 10 million and 20 millions. It's a little bit less, and then project less than 10 millions, you know, um, approximately $10,000. But as you add more testing, it, it keeps increasing. So this is the old data, but during pandemic time, we're still waiting for the new data to be published. Uh, that brings end to our presentation. Any questions? Thank you.